how to be attractive even if you're ugly. This style immediately caught my attention. I think that was the case for a lot of people since this video got almost a million views. Name a channel it's called On Point Fresh. We had them on for a podcast a while ago. Some things he says I agree with and other things I disagree with. So we're gonna go through this video. I'm gonna add to it as we go along to see where the stuff he says is legit or full of shit. Let's get into it. One of the great things about being born a man is that if you're born ugly, it's not the end of the world. In fact, being a little ugly might even be an advantage. Let's delve into the world. Okay, so there's a truth and the falsehood here. Yes, obviously it's not the end of the world if you're born a little ugly, even if you're born moderately ugly. However, I don't think it's an advantage. Obviously it's an advantage to be born good looking. World of the medium ugly man. A genre of man that is underappreciated by other guys, but definitely appreciated by women. Contrary to what you might believe, being a 6'5 giga chat with model good looks is not what everyone wants, and it's definitely not what every guy can become. And the sad part is a lot of- That's true, most guys cannot become a 6'5 giga chat because you can't really change your height until, unless you do that weird surgery, right? But yeah, there's to argue that you know, you're a disadvantage or at least a level of the same advantage if you're born really good looking, I think is disgenuine. Now the one argument you could make is that, hey, if you're born really good looking, you're not going to work hard. You're not really going to focus on developing your charisma and your riz and stuff like that. And because of that, you might be a disadvantage. But assuming that that good looking guy works just as hard developing all those positive traits, then yeah, I don't see how he could be at any kind of a disadvantage to a guy who's less good looking. Guys think self-improvement won't work for them because of this. They're wrong though. They're looking at attractiveness through the eyes of a man. But what women find attractive can oftentimes be completely different. It's the same reason that when a seemingly- Okay, so yes, he's making good points here about the difference between the male gaze and the female gaze. I've talked about this at length in other videos. And basically, I think the big mistake is that guys are very physical. They're like, okay, pretty face, big tits, right? Women are somewhat physical, but they also focus a lot on personality, on vibe, on how you make them feel, on your confidence and things like that. They also focus a lot on the internal. And I think this is something that a lot of guys just completely gloss over. Average looking guy like Pete Davidson starts dating the most beautiful woman in Hollywood, it has the entire male population stumped. That's because- Okay, I think this is a little bit of this genuine analogy because Pete Davidson is extremely famous. He's very funny because he's a stand-up comedian and he has a reputation in Hollywood of being good in bed, having a massive schlong. Those are the things that are making him get all those hot girls. We're viewing the world in a completely different way. What men think they need to do to be attractive can oftentimes be completely different than what other people that That's true. attract find attractive. Enter the world of medium ugly. So what exactly constitutes being medium ugly? Put simply, being medium ugly means you're not traditionally attractive. You don't have a completely symmetrical face, your nose might be a little big or a little crooked, forehead a little bit big, but your imperfections make you attractive. This is of course combined with- So again, it's not your imperfections that make you attractive, it's the other things, the skills, the charisma, the humor that you develop, right, because you're not perfectly attractive that make you attractive, and then girls backwards rationalize your imperfections, like, oh, I actually kind of like his like long forehead, right? But initially, she's not staring at your like weird forehead and thinking like, oh, I love that fucking forehead. Other qualities that you possess. You might be really funny, dress really well, be really well groomed, or have a really cool skill. You get the idea. So how do you become an attractive man when you're ugly? Here's some key points. Number one, dress well and have an authentic aesthetic. I'll give you an example of an authentic aesthetic. If you're a skateboarder, it's already a really attractive hobby to have. If you also have a skater aesthetic, think shaggy hair, oversized jeans, and vans, it's an authentic aesthetic that represents you and makes you even more attractive. But if you don't even skate but attempt to emulate a skater aesthetic, people can tell you're being a poser and it has the opposite effect. You become unattractive. So yeah, I largely disagree with this. Unless you're in high school, no one's gonna like realize that, oh my God, you're not actually a skater unless you take it to like five levels was too far. I think the best advice, also, what if your your whole thing is being a nerd and playing computer games? What are you gonna fucking wear overalls and that's gonna make you attractive to women because it's authentic? This is pure nonsense, right? There are some niches which are attractive and some that aren't. I think the best advice when it comes to fashion is to wear clothes that fit well. You don't wanna, unless you're overweight, in which case you wanna probably wear loose fitting clothes, but in general for most guys, you wanna wear clothes that sit well on your body. You wanna have contrasting colors so you see my pants are white, my shirt is black, but sometimes they can be advanced to doing all black, right? So doing stuff like that, having good fashion will be something that will be beneficial to you irregardless of how authentic it is. Please dress well, but dress authentically. Next is charm. Having something charming about you and letting it flourish. If you're a funny guy with a good personality, this is a huge plus. Being able to joke about yourself and not being too serious all the time is a very attractive trait. But there is a line. You don't want to be self-deprecating all the time. Learn the fine line to walk. 
skills. I think this is true, but I want to give one big caveat. I believe that humor is something that you can't really develop to a large extent. Meaning if you're somewhat funny, you can become a bit more funny. I would say for me, humor is probably my biggest attribute, but I was always funny. It wasn't like it's something I developed. I think the big thing though that was happening to me when I was younger is that I was very self-conscious. I was nervous about what people would think about me. So I would just never really like let my jokes fly. And when I did, I would kind of half-ass them because again, I was really worried about offending people. When I stopped giving a shit, it seemed like I became a lot funnier, but that's only because, again, I kind of got rid of that filter that was in my head. So if you're in that category, then yes, you can absolutely improve your humor. However, if you're someone who just really isn't funny, you're not gonna go from that to being really funny. You can improve a bit, a little bit, but there are other things like other skills that you can develop, like confidence, charisma, being able to flirt, body language, there's a whole bunch of things that you can absolutely go from zero to hero on. I just don't think humor is one of them, but that's a little bit of a controversial opinion. Being really good at stuff is attractive, no matter what it is. If you're really good at chess or if you're good at fixing cars, literally whatever you can do better than the average person counts as a skill and is an attractive trait. Being groomed and Again, this is true for some skills, like playing the guitar, for example, can be very attractive to a lot of girls. But what if your skill is fucking playing World of Warcraft? Do you think girls can get turned on by that because you're authentic? No, there's a lot of skills which are absolutely not attractive. So it really comes down to the skill, dancing, you know, playing the guitar, stuff like that. Yes, very attractive. A whole bunch of other skills? No, no one gives a shit about besides other dudes. Smelling good. Just because you don't have model good looks is no excuse to not always smell good and be impeccably groomed. People definitely notice small things like this, and no man is truly that ugly if they groom themselves properly and smell good. Being physically fit, men and women are not super different. We both love nice physique on our partner. Being fit will always be an attractive feature. So yeah, this is true. Obviously being fit is good, but honestly, I'm a little disappointed because this video was super duper basic and also quite a few things, like the whole authentic thing, I definitely disagree with. Again, unless you take it way too far. So let me try to give some actual practical tips how to be attractive even if you're ugly, right? So first of all, you wanna focus on becoming less ugly, right? So there's always things you can do to improve. Now, I'm not saying you should do plastic surgeries or anything like that, but let's say you have a weak jaw. What you could do is actually grow out your facial hair, and that will kind of cover that. Or let's say, for example, you have a receding hairline, kind of like I do, or at least I used to do, right? So what you wanna do is do like grow gain, derma rolling, right? And even maybe get a hair transplant to kind of cover that up. Or let's say, for example, you have really thin arms or whatever. So go to the gym and you train that so you have a wider back, right? So there's always things you can do to compensate for your genetic disadvantages, right? Again, only to a certain level, but still, if you're a four, like, and let's say you haven't done any kind of looks maxing, you probably become a six, and maybe with good fashion, stuff like that, you even become a 6.5. However, there's limits to that, and that leads me to the second point, which is that you focus on the internal. And with that, you can go from being a four to being a nine or a 10, unless you have some major, major disability, right? So for example, let's say you're a guy who's me is slightly below average looking, right? And you've looked smashed a bit. And I'm not saying you do one or the other. You actually do both at the same time. Then you try to become as confident as possible. Learn as much game as possible. Develop the best type of social intuition and self-awareness. Really be able to smooth talk a girl, seduce a girl, talk to a girl without getting any anxiety, right? And just being extremely confident. Learn how to escalate. Learn how to make a girl laugh and turn her on. All these things will give you massive advantage over guys who can't do that because the average guy has no idea how to cold approach and go up to a girl in the street. The average guy has pretty Pretty shitty game. So again, if you can do that with a little bit of looks maxing and also maximizing the other things that you can actually really, really max out, then you will have definitely an advantage even if you're a guy who's not that attractive.